It's okay to be in grief. Grief is the physical result of love. Without grief, where's the experience of love? And, you know, with him in my practice, I'm, I'm, I'm not offering a cathartic experience. I'm not offering a healing experience. I'm not a healer. Who is? But what I am doing is the ability to promote the grief to be cared for. My memorial is inherently just a marker, name and date, structure, bed and head. My memorial is more about engagement, what you do there, what you take away, what you actually contribute. The big, the big difference in my approach to practice on building memorials is that I'm not interested in brochure. And the brochure is about a, a set recipe. The ingredients are what colour granite you want, what font, what shape, it's all about profile and material. And often these projects come from China or India. They come in within four weeks, so you just sign, you pay your deposit, and then, then it arrives. So you have no further input into it until it's complete. Then all you do then is you place the flower or you tender it by cleaning. So I put that to bed, that's not how I do it. If you're interested in that approach, then go somewhere else. This is what I do. We have a conversation, a series of conversations about about the person who has died, about yourself, about your rituals. For example, you might tell me that, or some people have told me that when I come to the memorial, I just want to sit and put my hands in the, in the, in the dirt, in the garden that I've already established. So some memorials are partly built through, through the landscape. So I want to continue that. I want to get closer to my loved one. So we think about how we continue that as a ritual so that it becomes a very part, a strong part of the, of the design feature. There might be a certain sort of object or objectivity they bring to the memorial, and that could be the, the placement of flowers or the placement of cards. I like to write it at the memorial, so it, then the, the potential is the repository. So it's a further engagement of memorial and, and memory. So commonly, there's been a death, and from that point, it's a series of really quick steps to the funeral. You're in and out from the, the funeral director to the funeral burial or the funeral cremation. Then you're left with this void and the void is usually a little year later when potentially you might contact a memorial mason or, or a memorial architect designer builder as myself. So the invitation is to slow it down to your pace where you empower your client as opposed to the brochure where it is another quicks in the process of getting in and out. Often I meet with my clients a year after the death and it's, uh, it's interesting for me to kind of observe where they're at and, and then to invite a pace, a pace at their, at their, their own invitation in the sense that there's no rush for the project. We don't need to push this through unless, unless they're, they're really crying out for a, a, a specific time of, of acknowledgement and usually that is an anniversary. It could be the first year or the second year. It could be culturally or religious base. But most of the time, it's not. So we set up this sort of language in terms of uh, how, how we go about the project. We set, set up an agenda. We meet, usually at gravesite or in the cafe, neutral spaces. And then we set projects amongst ourselves. So there's sort of a care to the process, there's a care to the timing. It's, 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 it's really important to work with their own own um, breathing in and breathing out of the project and therefore you get a deeper sense of narrative and a deeper sense of of um, surprises within the project. My quiver, my tools, is spatial awareness. Awareness of the site, that's, that's probably the easiest part to understand the slopes of the site, the winds, the ant tracks, because the memorial was only witnessed for such a small time of the year by, by people. The rest is by the animals, by the, by the environment. I ask my clients, when do you come to the gravesite? And it could be on the anniversary, their anniversary, or some sort of moment. We call use the word moment in the year. It could be Mother's Day, Father's Day, their birthday. And it could be a particular time of the day. It could be their wedding anniversaries where it's the same time. So 
I offer, well, where's the light on that moment? It, I can work out with simple geometry where the light is at any time of the day, any time of the year, sunset, sunrise. So there's an invitation to extend the ritual of, of uh, the memorial experience, a deeper, a deeper sense of meaning. For example, memorials that have certain light apertures can come into the space at a certain time for just one minute a year, then it passes. Or the projection of, of, uh, of um, shadows onto the structure for one minute a year, because that one minute a year could be the last breath of that person. Or it could be the moment they got married where you have a portion of 20 minutes or so of, of um, celebration of the marriage and the light comes into a space and illuminates certain pictures of the wedding. So there, there becomes the ritual, the ritual of when they attend the memorial. These are important tools and they're not tools that are, uh, I've suggested, they're tools that I've picked up on from ancient, ancient approaches, the barrows, where the deep light would come into a barrow and illuminate on, this, on the solstice the shortest day or the longest day. These are classic memorial experiences. So we bring that into the modern context. Other ways of thinking about ritual could be um, there's, a, um, there's a certain time of a year where there's a certain light or smell that, that, that they associate with. Hence, you could then design the memorial about, based on that aroma. So material, materiality and the experience of those is really important for me. That's why I kind of say, well, I'm not interested in the brochure because the brochure supports granite. Granite's a magnificent material, but it's incredibly hot in, in southeast Queensland. And it's, it's all about repelling because you can feel the heat off it. You don't want to touch it, so you just look at it. So hence, most of the memorials are just about looking at it. That's okay. But for me, my memorial is about engaging, coming onto the spaces, sitting on the spaces, sitting at the edges, walking through them lying in the spaces. So different materials that I offer, materials of architecture, the concretes, the woods, the ceramics, the glass, the, the, the metals, familiar materials, materials that they grew up with, that they associate with so comfortably. And when at the end of the day, this is the, one of the few art projects they ever engage with, they end up with a potentially a bed and head. Now that's okay for some, but, that's, and, but what they don't know is that there are way other forms of typology and approaches to memorial um, forms. But the only way I can extract that is by listening to my clients carefully. Really stand back, sit down and carefully listen to their story. Out of that becomes approaches. Approaches that are really important for them. Not for me. It's not about me. It's, this memorial is about for the people that experience the memorial. So they, they are so I'm just a passenger to the experience. I stand back, sit back, and let, let the stories come forward. What's really important too is the modesty, is to stand back from the process and let the project come forward at its own pace. Just do enough, not too much, but enough to have it sit comfortably, in balance, in balance with the rhythm of the people's lives, in the rhythm of the, of the cemetery, in the rhythm of uh, the, day's, the day's activities, the light, the winds, the senses. So you, awareness of space, awareness of my client is really important to be the ingredients of a good design.